Flooding is the second most common natural disaster on planet Earth, right behind wildfires. From 2003 to 2013, flooding has cost Canada $20 billion in damages. But what makes a flood? What can we humans do about it? Simply, a flood is water on land that's normally dry. By that definition, this is technically a flood. But unless you're an ant, you're probably just going to call it a puddle. There are a number of factors that go into a flood occurring. One of them is extreme weather events. Another is a catastrophic failure of human infrastructure. For this reason, scientists and meteorologists have grouped them into five distinct categories. Aerial. This type of flood occurs gradually, normally from prolonged rainfall. If your street or local park begins to pool up, it's probably due to aerial flooding. Riverine. This occurs when excessive rainfall over an extended period of time causes a river to exceed its capacity. It can also be caused by heavy snow melt, and remember this one? Ice jams. Estuarine, also known as coastal flooding. This occurs when dry and low-lying land is submerged by seawater. How much flooding happens is dependent on how fast the land rises away from the coast and what the specific geography of the area is. This is usually caused by massive storms or hurricanes. Urban flooding is caused by rainfall that overwhelms drainage systems like storm sewers. This kind of flooding can do serious infrastructure damage to major cities in a matter of minutes. This happens because the natural drainage patterns of the landscape have been replaced by concrete and asphalt, non-absorbent materials that increase the amount and speed of the runoff. And finally, catastrophic floods. As the name implies, these floods are particularly devastating and are usually associated with major infrastructure failures, such as the collapse of a dam. They may also be caused by other natural disasters like a landslide, earthquake, or volcanic eruption, which changes the natural drainage channel in the area. Before humans were around, floods were a welcome part of the natural world. Waterside ecosystems were able to move from one place to another, and nutrients just like this went from beside the river to well inland in the forest. But as our developments grew larger and more complex and our communities more permanent, we now try to control the flooding. And as it turns out, we're not that good at it. The Grand River and its tributaries in southern Ontario are well known for flooding, especially in the springtime. Some structures are more well prepared than others by way of watertight seals and excessive sump pumps, but that doesn't stop the water from causing scenes like this in 2020. Canada has become wetter since the 1950s, but we haven't yet seen an increase in extreme flooding events year over year. Most of the increased precipitation has been in the Arctic, as well as the southeast and southwest parts of Canada. The prairies have seen either little change or even a decrease. 